Hello, you're watching Deal Flow, the CNBC Africa show that gives you perspective on Africa's deal makers. I'm Erica van der Marwe. South African listed cement firm PPC is fast broadening its footprint in Africa. The company has acquired an additional 20% in Ethiopian company Habesha Cement, raising PPC's shareholding there to 51%. It also has several greenfields projects underway in markets such as Rwanda, Zimbabwe and DRC. Now for a look at where the PPC story is headed, we talk to Nick Norman Smith from Lentis Asset Management and Chris Gilmore from the Barclays Africa Group. Welcome, good to have both of you here. Nick, starting with you, if you look at the PPC story currently and also in the context of its history. This is a business that in the South African market, if you look at margins under pressure because of underutilization of capacity, tremendous competition in this market. And then the future seems to be driving hard on this African expansion story. Do you agree? Yeah, and, and it's certainly not the only company. I think any listed South African business these days have to have, has to have at least one or two slides on their African growth story. You know, that's what investors want. And one always needs to obviously be careful. It, it's, uh, it's a tough doing business in Africa, um, as we've seen from uh, companies like Tiger Brands and, and various others. So, yeah, that, that is the, the key. You know, as you mentioned, there's, there's low demand in South Africa at the moment, um, increasing supply, uh, increasing competition um, from Sapaku and the Dangote Group. Um, so you need to start looking elsewhere. So Africa is, uh, it obviously makes a lot of sense. But... These these are business these are projects that have long lead times and a lot of uh, cost a lot of money, um, so there are clearly risks whenever you you have these massive procurement mm -hmm. projects. Chris, if you look at the the latest results for the full year 2014, you see revenue from South Africa 73 percent of group revenue, but the target is to reduce that to 60 percent by 2017. So so ambitious but not too aggressive. No, and I think realistic. I think that's that's the main watchword here, Erica. If you look at all these fairy stories we've heard for a number of years now about this wonderful infrastructural boom, in inverted commas, that's supposed to be taking place. Well, if it had been taking place, I don't think all the construction companies would have been moaning about the fact that there's no business here and, and going off into the rest of Africa and Australia. I think PPC would have been doing an awful lot better. Um, and if you look at, our, at the growth we've got here now, it's, it's really, it's paltry, it's, it's pathetic. Uh, to do sub 2% for two years on, on, on in, a, in a row. And we were just saying before, before uh, we came on air, we're probably going to see similar next year because of Eskom constraints. So I think the realism creeps in, in the sense that we've got a very, very lacklustre uh, lo a local economy that isn't about to change anytime soon. And therefore, if you're looking for growth, got to get into the rest of Africa with all the attendant risks mm. that, uh, that are there, obviously. Well, let's get the perspective uh, from the company. Beggy Sibia is the executive chairman of PPC. This is what he had to say about PPC's expansion in Africa. We are growing into the rest of the African continent, as you are aware, and we are excited about that growth. Zimbabwe, DRC, Rwanda, and Ethiopia. And for when one grows, one needs to do a bit of own equity plus a uh, uh, project funding and for us uh, we made the adjustment on the dividend policy on the basis of that. But we would not want to do the garnering of the support at the expense of the company. Nick, if I were to ask you there about the, the funding of this expansion, so we, we're seeing the, the debt to EBITDA ratio creeping up from one and a half times in the previous set of results to I think 2.4 times at this stage. Still looks relatively conservative. Do you expect this to go up further? Uh, it, it may well do, but remember, there's a lot of capital expenditure that goes in, and the the revenue that's going to come only comes a little bit later. So it's going to take a couple of years to build these projects, and you're not getting the cash flow in. And if you do, you know, construction is a very cyclical business. If you see some downturns, you could put yourself under under a lot of pressure. So yeah, obviously, as as you mentioned, there you know, get specific project finance for these projects and and ring fence into a certain extent, which which at least uh, lowers your lowers your risk. Um, yeah, it's 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 a tough business out there, and and it does cost a lot of money to to maintain these plants. You know, we look at locally when you've got these new Sapaku plants. You know, everyone's talked about how how much more efficient they are. Um, so when you've got competitors that are coming in there and um, generating those efficiencies, you need to maintain your t your equipment and and your infrastructure to to maintain cost competitive mm. competitive. So Chris, in the local market, some of those numbers, volumes down, um, I think it was 3%, 2 to 3%, 2%, uh, prices up only 3%, unit costs up 8%, so you're seeing the pain there. Um, so shareholders, management having to maintain a long-term focus in this business. Um, so having also done some acquisitions in the local market, Pronto being one of them, um, uh, Safika Cement being another, and then so adding on to that, what we spoke about earlier, the, the Greenfields expansion. So let's talk a bit further about those. So the acquisition of this Ethiopian asset, but that's also 
also an ex expanding asset where capital is required. Yeah. And if you look at some of the other things they're talking about, we're one million tonnes per annum uh, plants in DRC and Zimbabwe. And we're talking, what, about 100, 200 million dollars each. Um, and as Nick says, it's going to take a long time before we actually get the revenues coming out of this. So the, the, the debt burden could become quite significant over the next few years if we're not careful. Yeah, so, so Ethiopia is the biggest, one, 1 1.4 um, megatons, I think is the correct terminology. So that, that's the biggest of all their of all of their projects. They do only have a 51% stake. So so the deal was good, and that it, uh, the, the IDC and and PPC had a stake. So I guess they they could work together, but this gives them you know complete uh, control, sort of unfettered control. So that that's that's obviously good when you're applying all of this capital. And Ethiopia is the it's the second most populous. Uh, country on the African continent, the 90 million people. They're building uh, dams, uh, power stations. So the the demand the demand is um, is sort of three times um, the supply. So they're having to import a lot of cement. So the market is certainly there for them. Having said that, Dangote Cement, the biggest cement producer in Africa, controlled by Africa's richest man, who's been very successful selling cement, um, is building a plant as well. So th there's some competition out there. There's probably more than enough to go around, given those numbers that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's it's not as if there's there's not anyone else out there. So, um, but but it clearly, if the demand and, and the growth in Eoth Ethiopia carries on, then, you know, there's there's some some great yeah. opportunities there. So you're, you're both emphasizing the risk, the risk of doing this expansion. And for everyone, it's risky in every sector. Cement just seems to be that much more interesting and potentially painful with Dangote, uh, very active across the continent, but also imports um, in the local market for imports from. Pakistan from Turkey and I'm sure those players are also active in the rest of the continent. Yeah look I think pivotal to all of this is uh, the sustainability of the African growth story and with the oil price coming off and likely to stay around about between 70 and 80 dollars for the foreseeable future that's going to put pressure on some of your big um, uh, African economies like Angola and Nigeria particularly and and oil exploration in, in the rest of Africa has been going quite nicely as well but if you look at most countries in Africa and Nick mentioned Ethiopia it's going to be growing 8% per annum for the foreseeable future um, one of the key elements that's missing in Africa is manufacturing so you've got Chinese and other countries putting lots and lots of money into big infrastructural projects but if you don't get uh, manufacturing coming through over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you may just find that a lot of that growth that is, that is supposed to be you know, sustainable into almost infinity uh, starts slowing up a bit. So that, that I think, uh, puts in perspective some of the risks involved here. Mm. Now, another risk is perhaps uh, more apparent that we've seen in the media, very painful, very public dispute at the boardroom level and, and then uh, significant shareholders coming into play with Getza Gordon resigning in September and, and, and the follow through um, from that. So let's just, before we discuss that, let's just uh, have a look at what Beggy Sabia, the executive chairman of PPC, had to say about the resignation of Getza Gordon. The CEO again has access to the shareholders at any time and therefore he didn't have to resign to have access to the shareholders. He had just to say, shareholders, here are the challenges that I have, and let's deal with them appropriately. Nick, this is really turning into a he said, she said situation, but a lot at stake. It is. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's unfortunate how it's all played out. It, it's hard to speak. We, we don't know the, the exact situation f uh, and on either side, but clearly, you know, resigning, coming back in, everyone canvassing everyone, not being able to speak, then speaking, it, it, you know, it's, yeah, it, it all is very, very unfortunate and, and it is, you know, it comes at a cost to the shareholders. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that, that Ketsa mentioned was the fact that he was integral in, in a lot of the financing, which is quite tough to get. So I don't know the details of, of which exact projects, but one would imagine, given that this is the biggest one in, in e Ethiopia, for example, you know, he feels he's quite integral to that. Um, yeah. The company's come out and said otherwise. So, uh, yeah, maybe it's just a bargaining chip. Similarly, Ketsa Gordon enjoying seemingly a great deal of support from among staff members who are also significant shareholders, Chris. Yeah. Look, I think coming back to the bit about sustainability, in, in, in a micro level within PPC, when I was on a program with him on CNBC a few months ago, and he came across to me as an incredibly earnest individual, and he walks the talk. I mean, he's taken a million rand a year uh, pay cut, and he really has succeeded quite nicely in narrowing the gap between the lowest and, and, and the, the highest paid in, uh, employees within the company. And I think that again redounds to sustainability. If, if, if you have so many companies where 
you have the kind of slash and burn mentality, take out whatever you can and, and you couldn't care less about the consequences. That is not sustainable. Whereas what I think Ketso is talking about is a, is a much more sustainable model. But I agree with, with Nick, I think the way in which he went about it was mm. perhaps a little bit hasty. Mm. Now there's an ex uh, extraordinary general meeting at PPC coming up in about a fortnight. Um, so hopefully it will be resolved. One doesn't know what the, the follow-on consequences would be. But could this, if we're talking about deal-making, PPC's activity over the medium to long term, could this create a problem for its expansion strategy and the success thereof? Look, hopefully not, because I think you know if you if you look at uh, the, the the landscape there, what is actually happening? I think so many of these these projects are in play, and Becky Sabi has, has made the point that you know they are in there for the long term. Um, but look, I think a lot depends on some of the personalities involved here. I mean, we've already seen a couple of people leaving. Um, you know, I forgot the chap's name now. The the, the 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 local PPC guy, he's just gone. So if they can maintain. Um, harmony within the board, whether it's the existing board or a new board, and they have a, 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 sh a common shared vision, then I think fine. Mm. But I think uh, uh, it, it's going to be uh, critical to all of this that they actually have some, some degree of harmonization mm. of, of, of interests in the board. Nick, pulling this all together, just from a sort of a, a stock selection perspective, so uh, for a long-term investor, so you've looked at the opportunities from the, from the growth uh, perspective, um, but also many risks. Um, within its own home, but also in various regions, mainly it seems to be in the east, uh, Afri east re eastern regions of Africa. Nick, uh, would you be buying PPC? Uh, we don't feel, you know, it's, it's a great business, uh, cement, uh, you've got great, uh, if you've got the right location, um, you, can, you can really print a, a lot of money. It's a fantastic business if you get it all right. Unfortunately, we're of the view that there are quite a, a considerable number of risks, as, as there always are when you're going into new continents, uh, well, new, new countries and new regions. Um, I don't believe that you are paying enough of a discount to factor in tho those potential risks. So, yeah, we, we'd have to see quite a, quite a lot uh, mm. cheaper entry point before we got uh, excited about it. Chris? Yeah, I would agree with Nick. I think you've, you've got to look at some of these, these metrics out there. We've got to see a much bigger gap between return on investment and, and the weighted average cost of capital. It's, it's nowhere near uh, big enough yet. Uh, I think that to see that on a sustained basis, and I think this is the key. I keep coming back to this bit about sustainability. If this is going to be sustained, uh, then yes, I think it could, look be, it look, could be looking very, very good uh, a few years from now. But I think there's too much uncertainty and there's too much um, a possible volatility uh, in this whole thing. Wait, we'll wait till after the, ask me after December the 8th and the EGM and we'll maybe have a different answer. <laughs> it's going to be very exciting indeed, Chris and Nick. Thanks for your time. That's it for this week's Deal Flow. Nick Norman Smith uh, and Chris Gilmore were my guests. From me, Erica Funamadva and the Deal Flow team, it's goodbye for now.